just may be the world's fastest engineer. That's right. Give me a big project and I'll crank out that HDL like nobody's business. 10,000 lines in a week. And then I'm off to Maui, sipping umbrella drinks on the beach. Of course, then my cell phone rings. What a bummer, when you're already in Maui. <laughs> Apparently, my design has a few bugs. Okay, really a lot of bugs. And the uh, printifs I put in aren't exactly helping very much. Dang. <laughs> Would somebody hold my drink? Because apparently I have to go back to work for a while. <laughs> it turns out I'm not alone. A huge amount of verification effort these days is spent in debug. And just finding the bugs is the easy part. It's locating the root causes and then actually fixing them that's tricky. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Today my guest is Adam Shear from Cadence Design Systems. And we're going to talk about moving debug out of the old print F days and into the modern era. Before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find out more about debug solutions from Cadence Design Systems. Hi, Adam. Thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, it's great to be here. Thanks. So Cadence has a lot of debug technologies, and we've done a chalk talk on Perspec, Proteum, but what's new with verification? So what's new in verification is this Indago platform. We've got a lot of great technologies, just like you said, that we've been building in verification for a while. We put those together into these really exciting flows like power and mixed signal and even this functional safety space. But debug, my gosh, we've been talking to so many customers. This is something that's really on the forefront of people's minds and verification. So wait a second, Adam. Debug is not new. No, it's not. That's, that's really good to see. It isn't new. We've been doing debug in the industry, well, since the industry has been an industry. Yeah. What's new is the amount of time verification engineers are putting into this problem. Ah. So... When we surveyed our customers, we found that as much as 50% or more of the verification time is spent in debug. Wow. Yeah. And where is this coming from? Well, the SOC is simply getting bigger. Uh, there's complexity with power and hardware and software and analog and different engines to help solve the problem with formal and simulation, emulation. Even the language is growth, right? We've had System Verilog and UPF and all these other different things that have grown over time. E, this is a lot of work. And when customers put together these big SOCs, it's like a needle in a haystack now. So 50%, Adam, that's a lot. Why do you think it's become that big of a problem? Well, you know what? Let me take you through a small example. I think it'll become pretty obvious. Okay. Given verification today, what most of our customers will do is they'll run a regression overnight. And they run dozens, hundreds, even thousands of tests in that regression. And what will happen is some number will fail. That's part of the process. Sure. What do you do? Well, typically these run without debug data in order to run an efficient farm. But we'll pick up the few that fail and then rerun them with debug data. This is a common process. Yeah. And great. So now we have the work that our engineers do the next day. Their list is, here are the failures, go figure them out. Right. So we got an example here. We detected a failure at the output, and our task is to find the root cause. We have to find the underlying bug. So we'll use our tools. We have print statements that we put into the code, rerun the simulation to get a little more data. We'll use the waveform file we originally got, maybe some log files that happen along the way, and then we'll use some tools, typically signal tracing, and we'll sort of find our way back from the error back to its original source, make the appropriate changes, rerun, show that the test is passing. It's all good. Yeah. Problem is, it might not be. True. <laughs> so there's a chance that because of this one test, we will find a few sources that are related to that one test. But in these big SOCs, especially where we have multiple instances or complex structures, we might miss other sources lurking around in the design. Right. So we think we've done a great job, but we're missing bugs. And we've spent a lot of cycles just to find the ones we did. Right. Okay, so Adam, how does Indago help with this? Yeah, so let me stay with the same example. 
and give you a sense of that. Yeah. So same course of action, run the regressions, get the data, all that kind of good stuff. Yeah. But now we're going to use some automation on that root cause analysis. One of the things we'll do is we have all these different files. Remember that, that our engineers work through day to day. We're going to bring them all together. And we'll be able to, in one place, start to look through all of that. Because we have that, that's some of the automated tasking or the manual tasking people do today. We're going to automate some of that so that they can find those issues more quickly. And one of those aspects is you'll be able to ask, what if there are other sources? And now, instead of missing those other two that are hidden, we might be able to find them all. And now we really can find the underlying bug and resolve this. And that's going to give us a faster solution and a more robust solution for the bugs we find, especially at SOC. Wow, this sounds great. Now, how do I get this in Dago product? Ah, product. You know, we get that a lot. Um, and this is the challenge of being a product manager is kind of explaining <laughs> what products and things are. Right. What we built is a platform. Okay. And the reason we've done this as a platform is... There are multiple different tasks an engineer is going to undertake. And they may do typically one of them. That's where their training is. For SOC, they may combine a few together. And we have some examples of these here. You can see effectively three of these tasks embedded in three products. Okay. Debug analyzer, which is great for test bench and RTL debug. Embedded software app for, well, embedded software. I mean, it's sure. Self-explanatory. <laughs> and a protocol debug for verification IP. But we built these on a foundation of resources. This is what makes it a platform. These are a common set of libraries, utilities, GUI elements, all the different things that we need to build commonality across these apps and to make sure that each one of them carries those automation techniques, the patented automation capabilities in each of those applications. Now, an engineer may use them standalone, as I mentioned. They may be used together for the complex SOC components. And we can even support third-party engines in that flow. Cool. Okay. So, Adam, I do have a question here. A root cause analysis is how people do debug. So why is that new here? <laughs> yeah. A uh, root cause is not new. I think Grog did that when he invented the wheel. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So it's not new. What is new is productivity. All right. We need automation because the problem is so big. So I could take you an example here. If you recall, we retrieve our debug data from regression. Sure. Now, what do we do with that? Well, if we didn't quite get exactly the right data, typically temporary variables are a big area in assertions or in test benches where we don't capture that data because, well, it's temporary. It's just created and destroyed as the test bench flows. Right. So we probe. And often that means adding a print statement or, but more importantly, it's an iteration. It means we rerun the simulator. Right. Well, if that takes 10 seconds, well, you probably don't need any of these tools because, well, it's a tiny design and <laughs> y'all should know how to fix that. Right. <laughs> the problem is if it takes minutes or hours to rerun, mm -hmm. all right, this can take a lot of your time and you're regenerating most of the same data again and again. Right. With Indago, you're going to run it once. We're going to drop all the data that you need, including those temporary variables and messages and all those multiple different data files and bring that all together. That reduces the resource requirements, so you don't need to run again and again, but it's also a big time savings. An example of how our customers use this, one of those iterations might be that you called the designer, the person who owns that IP, and said, hey, I have a question about the work you did. Hmm. And he answers the question, and he goes back to work, and then you have another question. Right. But he's busy, <laughs> so you have to wait for him to cycle back. Because you have all that data together, you can join your colleague, you can sit down, and you can explore. And you don't need to do that rerun and push them off and wait. Mm, okay. You have that all together right there for you to collaborate. Gotcha. So I think I got it. Platform, not a product. Okay. Yes. <laughs> but I probably have to do something, right? It magically doesn't work, right? <laughs> exactly. So you do need to use a thing, a product, and... What we've defined in Indago here on the first iteration is three apps. Okay. And we'll be bringing out more of these over the course of the next months and, and year and, and beyond. 
But these are the first three that we've built. There's an Indago debug analyzer, which is great for RTL and test bench. You can see errors highlighted in the code. You can see the causal relationships. That's how the, we connect the variables and the values and the issues in the design. Okay. There's embedded software. This is a big area for our customers today where they have embedded cores in their design and they want to synchronize C, C++ that's running in their system with the hardware, with the test bench. So how do you track all this together? Yeah. Well, that's what this app does. It'll read like an ARM tarmac file and keep it all synchronized with the original source code that you're running on the embedded as well as your hardware. Cool, okay. And then cool, I'll tell you about cool, the protocol debug app, all this right. thing is cool. It's gonna provide visualization whether you're new to the protocol and you're really trying to learn it. It's gonna give you a channel view to understand how the communication channel is working in the verification IP. It'll help you read through the different messages, a smart log of messages coming out from the verification IP. But one of the really good things, if you're new or you're just not familiar with the verification IP, is a finite state machine, FSM visualization. Many of these verification IP components have multiple different state machines within them, complex protocol. Sure. This allows you to visualize it, see the current step, what's going to come in the next step. Really great to kind of understand the protocol and how it functions. And then in the debug space, just trying to understand what's happening, we have this life story. And that's going to track a packet, let's say, through the protocol. And you can see how it's affected throughout its lifetime operating in that protocol. Really interesting, really cool for working with verification IP. All right, Adam, but um, I'm a printing and rerunning kind of gal, so how do I get from here to there? Well, we have a lot of folks that are doing that. <laughs> Actually, it's interesting because for some time we started with that early in the industry. We seemed to move away from it to do waveform debug. Uh -huh. And we kind of came back in this crazy world of system <laughs> Verilog. In the early days, kind of wild west, we were building simulators real quick and the debuggers were following but engineers had to do work, so they started using printf's, right? And it's right. old, tried and true. Problem is, not real efficient. No. <laughs> but we can help. So whether you've always been doing that or just gotten back into it, we have training materials, we have videos, we have lunch and learn kinds of things. We can come on, work with your teams, and really help you learn, and even move to just sort of the mainstream where you're using more graphic user interface. That'll make you more efficient right from the get-go. Mm, okay. That's not really Indago, but we have those tools in our SimVision. And we can help you grow up from there. We can show you how Indago works and get you started on a project. We can even connect it with our verification management, our overall project management tools, so that that whole nice image of run the regressions, gather the data, and be ready to run, we can get Indago running right in that flow, get you running smooth as silk. Excellent. All right, Adam, I think I might need a little bit of a recap here. What uh, do you got for me? Yeah, it, it, I know. This stuff is, it's really, it's a, paradigm shift. It's really a different way of doing debug. Yeah. So learn about Indago. We have white paper on the Cadence website. There's a lot of great information. This is a platform. So when you look at the apps or the products, the RTL debug with Indago debug analyzer or the hardware software with the embedded or the VIP, understand that you're just getting started. This is what we've offered there at the beginning. There's going to be more to come. You just keep watching Cadence for more announcements. But that patented root cause technology, that's the element in that Indago resources. That's part of that big platform. We're operating in this big data world, right? And so all those techniques for automation, uh, rerunning capabilities, all of that is about finding those simple patterns, the indicators that are going to show you where that bug is. That's using big data debug techniques in verification. And this is going to be supporting third parties, right? So we have some of that support in the tools today, and you'll see more of that to come. So this is really out there to make your debug life easier. Take that 50%, reduce it down, get you home with the family, and really enjoying life again. I love it. All right. <laughs> well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me, Adam. Thank you. This has been fun. Before we go, don't forget to click that link. There you can find out even more information about debug solutions from Cadence Design Systems. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, check out EE Journal's YouTube channel, 
keyword EE Journal or the on demand section of eejournal.com.